was trying to get my music to play. But, um, so the message today, for those that's joining in, you know, we on two different platforms right now. We on Facebook and Instagram at the same time. Um, we're going to be talking about, did you know that praise and worship is a weapon? Um, and how we be able to use this weapon. So we're going to dive into a couple of scriptures, uh, quite a few scriptures. And then also I will be um, reading the Father's Heart Ministry as always. And y'all know how we do. We always pray and invite the Holy Spirit in uh, before we start a lesson. Because, you know, we want to make sure that our uh, head is covered. You know, it's anointed with uh, the oil from the top of our heads. To the soles of our feet we want to make sure that our ears are uh, anointed as well and even our mouth you know the words is coming forth so uh first and foremost father i would just like to say thank you thank you for allowing me to live to see another day my family my friends and even my enemies father god um father i just uh, want to just say thank you for uh rescuing me from the hands of the enemy you know as the temptation that has been coming um and being able to resist it you know, sometimes uh, before Father God, the old me wasn't able to resist those things. But uh, yesterday is behind us and uh, today is, is a new day, a new day to be able to do something uh, greater than what I did yesterday. And even for the viewers that's watching, Father God, I pray for them as well. Uh, the anointing over them from the top of their head to the soles of their feet uh, to cover their children, Father God, as they go to school, cover themselves, Father God, as they go off to work and whatever they're, they're doing in their profession. Um, Father, I just want to uh, pray the uh, Psalms 35, Father God, to contend for us, um, O oh Lord. Contend for me as I'm on this platform right now, Father God. And I know the enemy uh, is coming for me. He's coming for coming for you as well, uh, brothers and sisters. He's coming for us because uh, we're not in his web anymore. We're, we've walked out of that and we're uh, following Christ right now. And Father, uh, as we're following Christ, we know the enemy is going to uh, try and set traps for us to fall into, you know, uh, like sexual desires or uh, uh, drinking or uh, getting high, getting lit, you know, stealing and, and killing folks and tearing people down. All those things are traps, Father God. And we just want to be mindful of those things, Father God. So I just thank you for your word as it's being on time as always, Father God. And even at the Father's Heart Ministry that I'll be reading uh, later on about um, what it says about uh, yesterday is behind us and today is a better day, a new day. So, uh, I am definitely going to be uh, applying this to my life forevermore, Father God, and daily. Uh, as me and my sister that uh, studied this word together, uh, we um, made a pact today, that, or not today, um, a few days ago, that we will uh, be praying Psalms 35 every single day, you know, to contend for us instead of arguing with folks or uh, cussing someone out. Uh, as you know our situations, Father God, you know my situation as far as uh, me desiring to have a home, to be able to take care of my kids, um, to be able to take care of myself as well, to have my uh, my own business and uh, working to provide, Father God, and even for my sister as well, Father God, her having her own place and uh, her own spouse and, and just, you know, so many things that we want, Father God, and that you're answering for us, so we thank you for your word, in Jesus' mighty name I pray, amen. Okay, so uh, I have to pause that, you know, because... Uh, for the rights, you know, if you don't have the rights to the music, they will mute your video. So we will we'll be reading the Father's Heart Ministry real quick, and then we'll dive more into the lesson, which I have my notes right here. So the Father says, today, will I kindle a fire and there not be a burning? Will I start a fire and then there not be a burning? The Father says, I, you know, let me start this fire. This is a season of refinement and much dross. Much wood, hay, and stubble is perishing in the flame. Don't give it another thought. What you think you are losing never was what I had permanently in mind for you. So whatever you lost, whatever I lost, whatever any of us that's watching this video lost, don't count it as a loss, count it as a gain because it's not what God intended for you. It's not what he uh, wanted you to have. He wants you to have greater things and better things. And that may be something that you wasn't supposed to have. Put your trust in me and not the fleeting resources of limited man or his self, uh, selfish ideas of accomplishment and reputation. Say in your heart, I will be 
of no reputation before man, that my father might hold me in reputation in the heavens. Say to yourself, I will not be in the reputation of man. I had to tell myself that today. I will not follow in the steps as uh, some of the pastors that I have uh, studied under or listened to or followed or even to uh, my own um, family and friends, you know, uh, men in my family, I will not follow in that same reputation. I will not be that same type of father. I will not be that same type of man. I will not be that same type of uncle or uh, brother. All of those things, I will not be in the reputation of that. I'm going to do something that I'm going to be in the reputation of my heavenly father. And it says, say it, accept it, embrace the truth of my deep calling to your deep, to your deep this day, says the father. Remember from the land of Jordan and the hill Mazar, for all my waves and billows are gone over you, sweeping away that which is fading and holding you back and plunging you headlong into a future of forward expectation where all your dreams are fulfilled and highest heart's desires spontaneously come to pass. You gotta understand, man. You're gonna go through some things. Some things gonna happen. You know, the wind is gonna blow and it's gonna take the leaves with it. You can't just flow with the wind and let it just blow you any kind of way and just follow that. You got to go with where the Father's taking you. You got to follow that pathway. You got to go where your heart desires. Give them to me, says God. Give me those things you thought I was going to do and let me do what I had in mind all along. So whatever it is that you thought that God was going to do, just give it all to him and let him do what he already had in mind for you, what he already had in store for you. It's a new day. It's a new day. And now you get to walk with me in a new way. Shed the soiled garments of yesterday's failure and put on the linen ephod of my now. Walk through the walls of adversity. Hey, walk through the walls of adversity. Don't give up, yo. Don't give up. Keep on going. If, if ain't nobody supporting you, ain't nobody listening to you, ain't nobody following you, ain't nobody putting you out there, keep on going. That's adversity. That's making you stronger. That's sharpening you because you getting ready for something that God has in store for you. And you can't be no quitter. You can't be somebody that gets down and out and just, oh, I give up. You can't give up. You got to keep on going. Don't let the enemy win. Don't let the, the enemy get in your conscience and tell you that you can't when God told you that you can. See through and not just with the eye that you might know there are more for you than there are against you. You got to know, man, that there's more for you than that's against you. Just because you don't know them and you can't see them don't mean that they're not there. You can't see the angels, but you know they there. You can't see the enemy, but you know that, that he's there. You can't see his minions, but you know they're there. The same with God. You got to know that God got his angels encamped around and about you and protecting you. And he got angels out here in the world that's taking care of you. That may not see you right now, but that be, might be praying for you right now. That be contending for you. Like when you talk to another brother or another sister and you tell them to pray for you, they pray for you. They're praying with you as you pray for them. You know, one could put a thousand to flight. Two could put 10,000 to flight. I think three could put a hundred thousand to flight and four could put a million to flight. And if you just keep on going, you just keep on adding that and adding that. And you know that we are more powerful with God's help than anything. <clears throat> see through and not just with the eye that you might know that there are more uh, there are more for you than against you. You got to know with your spiritual eye, man. You got to see that. Believe thou this. I know, I know you believe. You are a believing believer. So go ahead and be persuaded and convinced for the new has come. The old has faded away and everything changes according to my plan from this moment on, says the Father. Everything changes from this moment on. Make that decree. Make that declare that everything is going to change. Yesterday is long gone. You can't do nothing with it. You can't do nothing for it. You can only do what you can today. Just like 
when the next day come. This day is no longer going to exist. You just got to keep on going and keep on going forward and letting God direct your path and where he's taking you. And it ain't going to be easy because there's so much temptation around here. But you got to open your spiritual eye, your spiritual ears. You got to speak with your mouth. You got to confess with your mouth and speak to the enemy and tell him what God's word is. When somebody come at you and they got the enemy's words in their mouth, you say, uh-uh, not today. <laughs> the devil is a liar. We know that he's a liar. He's <laughs> a liar. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So when the enemy come through one of your brothers, one of your sisters, one of your friends, your co-workers or whatever it is, you got to speak to that situation right there. You got to speak like Christ spoke to the enemy when he was in the wilderness. So says the father. <laughs> that was a mouthful. All right, y'all. So we finna dive into, did you know that praise and worship is a weapon? So let me get my notes here because we got to dive into this. You know, me and my sister, we did this study. We're working on a, a, a somewhat like a prayer line, but a, a discussion line, you know, a Bible study where we can um, study together. All of us can come together in fellowship. You know, iron sharpens iron, steel sharpens steel. We're just working out the time frame right now, man. So y'all make sure y'all praying for us, uh, praying for this, uh, this on time message, this on time word, because uh, we need all the help that we can get, all the prayer that we can get. Thank you and praise the Lord. All right, let me get there real quick. Uh, do do anybody know what praise and worship is? Do you know what praise and worship is? Praise and worship is a weapon to be used against the enemy. And how do you know that? Let's go over here real quick to Second Chronicles chapter twenty, verse twenty-two. Second Chronicles. Get your Bibles if you don't have it. If you got, if you do have it, you know, go to Second Chronicles chapter twenty. And we're going to start at verse 1 because we're going to read the fullness of it. But chapter 20, I mean not chapter 22, uh, verse 22 is the highlight of it all. And if you don't have a Bible, get you one. Otherwise, download the Bible app. It's very good. And my sister, shout out to her because she loves reading from the Message Bible. That's her thing. Uh, let me see. Second Chronicles. Gotcha. Chapter 20. Real quick. All right. My pencil fell out of there. Y'all can see that. I got a lot of stuff in my Bible. Uh, so, uh, first and foremost, before we do this, y'all, uh, I want to invite the Holy Spirit in um, to anoint each and every one of us, those that are watching, even me, uh, anoint the words that's coming from my mouth that, uh, you know, be words of power, words of love, and words of life. Anoint my ears, anoint my head, uh, because I know that the enemy is coming. The enemy is going to come and he's going to try to, you know, shoot some distractions out there, try to shoot his arrows and, uh, and pierce you and pierce me in, in ways that it will get, try and get us off the path. But we don't, we come against that right now. We cancel all the uh, assignments that the enemy is sending our way, all those arrows that he's trying to shoot, all those traps that he's setting for us to fall into. We cancel all that and we bind that up in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody said, amen. Okay, so chapter 20. And we're going to start at the first verse. But remember, verse 22 is the highlight of this chapter. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, there comes a great multitude against you from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in Hazan Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Now understand, he feared, but what did he do? He went and he humbled himself first. He humbled himself and he said, okay, <laughs> we need to go on a fast. We got to get on a, you know, a spiritual fast. We got to fast for the Lord with this because a great army is coming. Something that we can't fight alone. So we got to do something different. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask 
help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Now understand, Jehoshaphat said, look, y'all, we got to do something different. He told him, I'm issuing a, a, a law. I'm issuing a law right now that we all need to fast. So he told Judah. And then what did Judah do? This is what they said. And all of Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. That's humbleness right there. They humbled themselves in that moment. And they said, look, this ain't a fight that we can fight with, with guns, with knives, with bow and arrows, with, uh, you know, any other weapon. This is a fight that only the Lord can fight. And what we must do is humble ourselves first and seek the Lord. And that's what we have to do. Humble ourselves and seek the Lord. So what did they do? And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God, our fathers art not thou God in heaven and rule not thou over all the kingdoms of heaven or uh, of the heathen. And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. He already knows, Jehoshaphat knows that God can defeat anything. He can defeat the things that he created, which they weren't the enemies at first. He wasn't the enemy. He was, you know, they was cool. They was cool. But then he wanted to come against God and he wanted to take his angels. Now, if y'all know about the enemy like I know about the enemy, y'all know that the enemy is the minister of music. Hold on to that. Put a pen in that. Art now, I mean, art not thou our God who did drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people of Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, your friend forever. Are you not the father who got the people out of Egypt, your people? Your chosen people, Israel, are you not that one? Are you not the one who spoke to Abraham and told Abraham he would be the uh, he would have uh, sons and daughters that of uh, more than the stars in uh, in the sky? Are you not him? They they asked me like, if you him, then we know how powerful you are. We know exactly what you can do. So contend for us, O Lord. Psalms thirty five. Read it. Apply it. Live it. And they dwelt therein and have built the uh, sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil comes upon us a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in your presence, for your name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. Praise. You praise God. When you cry out to God, that's a praise. That's a worship. That's acknowledgement. It's a weapon. It's a weapon that the Lord uses and the enemy uses the weapon as well. Because we're going to talk about, you know, your emotions and when you're going through something and what do you usually do? And we're going to dive into that here in a few. And now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not, behold, I say, how they reward us, come to cast us out of your possession, which is, or which thou hast given us to inherit. This praise is already in you. Why do you think we sing so much? Why do you think we listen to music so much? That's a divine connection to our Heavenly Father. Your praise is a divine connection. It's like a phone line. You know how they say, Jesus is on the main line. You know what I'm talking about? Tell him what you want. And what do we do? We sing to him. We sing to him. We praise him. We get the dancing and jigging and all of that stuff. That's what we do. That's in us already. Didn't nobody have to teach that to us. It was already inside of you. The rhythm was inside of you. The dancing is inside of you. The singing is inside of you. The voice is inside of you. It lives in you. That's the praise he wants to hear. That's the connection. That's the, the, the sound the uh, alarm. 
to our Heavenly Father when we're going through something, when the enemy is sending you through something, what do you need to do? You need to praise your Heavenly Father. You need to praise and worship because it confuses the enemy. Wait a minute, Lord. I'm sending this to him. I'm sending this to her. I'm doing this to them. I'm doing that to them. And they still praising you? Why? Because those are my children. They know me and I know them. That's how the father is. But see, the enemy uses that music, the gift that the Lord has given you, that weapon that's inside of you for those that can sing, for those that can dance, for those that can uh, uh, do both of them together. The enemy wants to take that from you and use it for his, his calling. He wants to call some of God's children and uh, uh, God's people to him. He wants you to use that in a demonic way. That's why the music, the sound waves and all of that stuff, that's why when you hear it, you get to feel in some type of way. You get into a mood. You get into, oh, well, dang, like, oh, I'm feeling this right here. You know how y'all be feeling it? You know how we be feeling it. When we feel that music, we, you know, the shoulders get to moving, the head get to bobbing, Next thing you know, your feet get to moving. Next thing you know, you just all in it. You just consumed in it. Because guess what? The enemy is the minister of music. See, he used to play some good music. Now he plays some negative music. He plays that music and then he makes it sound like it's good music. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Because when you're in a mood, when you done gone through a breakup or you done gone through some stuff, next thing you know, you listening to something that will just get you down. Something that's depressing. You know, some of us used to listen to Keith Sweat and, and, and R. Kelly and the Isley Brothers and, and Al Green and, and uh, Marvin Gaye and you name it. We can name a whole bunch of them, okay? In them type of moods. And it, it changes your mood. It changes the way that you see a person. Like you got the music where the women is tearing the men down or the men is tearing the women down. I can remember when it was me. You know, when I felt like that, I'm going to be honest with you. I used to listen to Zero. I used to listen to DJ Quick, Too Short, all of them. And y'all know about them. If you know anything about them, they used to talk down about the women. I mean, you know, Zero, he say, I hate you. You know what? And you just listen to them. And next thing you know, you in that same mind frame. Like, oh, I can't stand her. I can't stand women. Like, they get on my nerves. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm telling you, it will mess with your mood. So what do we have to do? We have to continue to use God's word and use that gift that God has given us, which is a weapon to fight against the enemy. But it's a weapon to call on God to fight for you against the enemy. But you get the dancing and you get the singing and praising and worshiping. And guess what? The enemy get the moving around because he don't like that sound. He don't like the sound of praise and worship. He don't like the fact that you are happy even though you struggling, even though you are homeless and you ain't got a home, even though you ain't got no car to drive or you ain't got no wife or no husband uh, or your children is cutting up, but you still praising and worshiping God through it all. The enemy don't like that. He don't like it because he can't do nothing with it. He got to move around. Oh, I hate the sound of listening to them praising and worshiping uh, our Heavenly Father. I can't listen to that. I used to play that stuff when I was in heaven and now I'm out here and I got a different tune. I got a different sound. I got to move around. I can't be in here and listen to that. See, the enemy knows that if he can get you to listen to the music that he got and not the music that the, the Lord has given us, he knows he can pull you right on in. He can pull you right on in through the sound waves. He can pull you in through the radio. He can pull you in through your cell phone now. He can pull you in through a CD. He can pull you in through television. He can pull you in any kind of way because everybody doing it. The music that they have out nowadays, all it is talking about is drugs and alcohol. And don't y'all see that drugs and alcohol is just running rampant. Children is overdosing. People is 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 getting high because they dealing with stuff instead of saying, you know what? 
hmm, I need to listen to something else. I need to watch something else. I need to watch something positive. I need more positive into my life. I don't need this negative stuff. I don't need the stuff that they saying is good, but it's bad for me because I'm following into it, but I ain't never getting no uh, good results from it. My flesh is so weak. I think that it's good, but it ain't. Because in the long run, next thing you know, I'm crying out to God again. I'm asking God, why, oh Lord, why am I going through this? And you know what the answer is? It's because you surrendered yourself to it. Because you were ignorant to the fact of knowing that this music is not good for you. The enemy don't want you to hear this message. The enemy don't want you to hear this word because he knows that praise and worship is a weapon. It's a weapon to be used for good, not for evil. Why do you think that it's so it's running rampant while it's all on television? While you got young girls and uh, 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 older women shaking their butt and dancing to these songs. And you got men out here throwing the money at them because the enemy knows that praise and worship is a weapon. It's a weapon for the Lord. So when you praising and you worshiping God, mm, he coming down and he fighting for you. He's sending them warring angels and guardian angels to protect you, to keep you from all hurt, harm, and danger. He making sure the enemy, them arrows that he's throwing at you, they ain't piercing you. He making sure all of that is being stopped. Verse 11, it says, Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of your possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will thou not judge them? For we have no might against the great company that comes against us. We don't have no might, no power for the, the company that's coming against us, Lord. We need your help. You got to understand, man. <clears throat> you can't fight this battle alone. You can't fight this battle by yourself. You can't fight the enemy with no gun with no knife, with no bow and arrow. You can't fight him with that stuff. You can only fight him with God's word. David knew it. David knew. He was a worshiper. He was a great fighter. He could fight and sing and praise and all that, but David knew that he better acknowledge God first and foremost before anything. You got to know humbleness. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Matania, a Levite of the sons of Asaph came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, hearken you all Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude for the battle is not yours, but God's. See, a messenger came and told them, hey, you ain't got to be scared. You don't have to fear them. Because this is not your fight. This is not your battle. This is the Lord's battle. God got you. Your heavenly father got you. Continue to praise him. Continue to worship him. That's why praise and worship must be done in the right way. Especially in the four walls that you call the church. Because see, it sets the tone. It sets the atmosphere. Praise and worship got to be on time. When we in there, the praise and worship has to come forth. That's why the enemy attacks the praise and worship team so hard. Because he knows that if that praise and worship is on time, the message is going to get there. Somebody's going to get it. Somebody's going to get delivered. Somebody's going to repent of their sins. Somebody's going to walk away from the ways of the world. Somebody is going to go and sin no more. Somebody is going to go tell somebody else and that somebody else is going to go tell somebody else because they're going to come up in there and they're going to praise and worship together. And next thing you know, we got a full house and this ain't no big old, you know, uh, worldly concert. This is a concert for God. 
We praising God. We worshiping God because we know what it's like to be in the world and following the ways of the world. But then we know also there's a better life that God has in store for us. And we want to see that. We believe that. Can't nobody take that from us. That's why we look crazy to everybody. That's why folks is out here saying there ain't no God or you are a God or uh, that Bible and all this other stuff. It's not real. It's, it's fake. You know why? Because they ain't been through nothing just yet. Or maybe they've been through something, but the enemy still got their ears, got their mind. But for us that woke up, that had that spiritual awakening, that had that moment with God, we know why we on this path. Because we want a better life. We want a better life for our children. We want a better life for our family, for our friends, and even our enemies. We want that for them. And that's why we press so hard. That's why we always pushing this out there because somebody is going to get it. It's going to wake up somebody's child. It's going to wake up somebody's wife. It's going to wake up somebody's husband. It's going to wake up a pastor that's been dealing with something. It's going to wake up a prophet that's been dealing with something. It's going to wake up a deacon, a bishop. It's going to wake up a nation of people. <sighs> Tomorrow, you down or uh, tomorrow go you down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz and you shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel or Jeruel. You shall not need to fight this or in this battle. Look, he told him you don't have no need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand you still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Don't even be tripping, because God got you. Because tomorrow, when y'all go out there, God is with you. You don't have to be afraid of how big they are, how tall they are, how big of an army they got, because you got God. You got your heavenly father right there fighting for you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. What did they do? They fell before the Lord. That's humbleness. They fell before the Lord and they worshiped him. They praised him. They acknowledged him. As the creator, they acknowledged him as the heavenly father, as the all knowing, as the all seeing. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. You got to believe his prophets. Believe his deacons. Believe his pastors, his shepherds of the Lord. Believe them when they tell you about praise and worship. And why we praise and worship. Because it's a weapon. It's a weapon that the enemy cannot control. That he can't even stop us with. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers. There you go again, y'all. I told you. He appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Don't y'all know we've been doing this for a while. Those that used to march, you know, with Dr. King and all them. Y'all know what they did when they marched? They always sang. We shall overcome. You know, they used to sing. That's what we do. Even the slaves during the time when they were in slavery. I, I mean, I would even like to think that even in Egypt, they began to sing. They began to praise God. 
They began to call on the Lord because even in the slave movies that you see, they always singing. You know, they say, oh, the old Negro spiritual or whatever that is. Listen, that is a spiritual awakening. That is us calling on God to fight for us. That is us calling on God to deliver us out of this, out of bondage, out of the hands of the enemy. That's what it is. It's your weapon. Oh, goodness gracious. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smiting, or smitten, as you want to say it. They began to praise, and as they began to praise and worship the Lord and sing and dance and what have you, they began to set ambushments or traps for them to fall into. Who set those traps? The Lord and his war angels. They was ready for them. They was ready for them. See, they was fighting something that they couldn't see. See, they was looking in the physical, but in the spiritual, the Lord was encamping them, round about them with angels to protect them. To set these traps for them to fall into. Psalms 35 where it says. "Set the tra They set traps against me. But instead of me falling into the trap. Lord. Let them fall into the trap that they set against me. They want me to fall. But let them fall. See they had to have set some traps. Because they were ambushed. They were falling into stuff. And they were defeated. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir utterly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. They began to de destroy each other. They began to be confused. They started shooting their own folks. They started stabbing their own folks. They didn't know what to do. Because the trap where they was coming against them, you know how they say, whatever you do to me, uh, stick, oh, I'm rubber, you glue, whatever you say to me sticks back to you. That's exactly what happened. It was like a boomerang effect. Okay, you threw this at me, but guess what? It's coming right back to you. And it's coming back to you 10 times as hard, 100 times as hard. Because you can't mess with God's chosen. You can't mess with God's children. He don't play that. Where was I? And when Judah came... Toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Judah, when they came there, they saw dead bodies everywhere. Did not near one of them escape the wrath of God. None of them. And when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering of the spoil. It was so much. So what happened? All the jewelry that they had on, all the riches and stuff that they had. See, Judah and, them, and, uh, and Jehoshaphat and them wasn't even there. So, the army that was coming for them, they was fighting angels. <laughs> and they was, they was going at it. And then they wake up in the morning, as they were told by the prophets, to not fear that the Lord would be with them. When they got there, everybody was dead. They was dead as what they would call or say a doornail. And they left behind riches. They left behind gold and jewelry. And you know what? Jehoshaphat and all them began to pick it all up. And they said it took them three days to gather up all of this stuff. See, what you stole from me, I get that back. That's what the word of the Lord says. It says what the canker worm has stolen, he's got to give it back. See, what they took from them, which was the original people, what they took from them and thought was theirs, was actually the ones that wasn't dead. That was God's chosen. The ones that listened. Judah and Jehoshaphat and his people. Alright. Um, where am I? And on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of 
Baraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name, uh, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Baraka unto this day. They then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy, for the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemies. Praise and worship. Thank you, Father. You rescued us. You saved us. So they began to sing and praise and worship God because not only did God stop the enemy from coming their way, from the, stop that army from coming their way, he also rewarded them for what? For diligently seeking him, for humbling, humbling themselves and praising him and not trying to do it in their own power, in their own might. But they humbled themselves and they prayed and they worshiped God and they danced and they sang. So when they got delivered from this and they got all these riches and, and all this jewelry and everything, they still was praising and worshiping God for what he did. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those that the Lord found or fought against the enemies of Israel. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet for his God gave him rest round about, and Jehoshaphat reigned over Judah. He was thirty and five years old when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and five years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shilai. And he walked in the way of Asa, his father, and he departed not from it, doing that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Howbeit the high places were not taken away, for as yet the people had not prepared their hearts unto God their fathers. Now the rest of the acts of Jehoshaphat first and last, behold, they are written in the book of Jehu, the son of Han uh, how you say that? Hanani, who is mentioned in the book of the kings of Israel. And after this did Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, join himself with Ahaziah, king of Israel, who did very wickedly, and he joined himself with him to make ships to go to Tarshish, and they made the ships in Azoni Geber. Then Eliezer, Eli, Eli, uh, Eliezer, the son of Dadva, the Marisha, prophesied against Jehoshaphat, saying, Because thou hast joined thyself with Ahaziah, the Lord hath broken your works, and the ships were broken that they were not able to go to Tarshish. Now you gotta understand, man. All of that happened. They got delivered, they they were rescued, they got riches and honor, but there was another test right after that, and Jehoshaphat fell for it, and because of that, um he didn't make it to Tarshish. The ship was broken, you know, all of these things. And so all I'm saying is is that hey, when you praising and worshiping God. Don't ever stop. Continue to praise and worship God for what he's done yesterday, today, and forevermore. Um, also, do y'all know about King Saul? King Saul was vexed with the evil spirit. But what did it take for that evil spirit to come off of King Saul? It took David. It took David playing, um, what do they call that? Uh, 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 I know it's spelled like, or it sounds like liar, but it's, it's, I think it's lyre, or I don't know how to exactly say it, but it looks like a harp. And David began to play music to deliver um, King Saul's uh, soul, you know, from uh, it being vexed. Now, here's a question, and I, I only got like maybe mm, 10 more minutes or so, maybe 15. What do you listen to when you are down or when you are going through it? What do we listen to when we down or when we going through it? Like, just be honest with yourself. What do you listen to when you down or when you going through it? Do you listen to something positive or you just do you listen to something that is going to bring you down even more? I know that when I uh, was depressed and I used to listen to music, I listened to stuff that would bring me down even further. That would have me in this this moment where it's just like, I, I don't think that I'm going to ever have a wife or have that family that I want. You know, I was just in that moment because I always just wanted to be a husband, you know, be a, a father to uh, my children and, and be different from what I grew up seeing. But in that moment of uh, time, I would listen to music that wasn't uplifting. 
You know, I would listen to stuff that would bring me even further down, that would change my mood, change the way that I saw, you know, people. And it just wasn't even with women. It was sometimes when I got frustrated or when I used to be like in the world and I used to uh, steal and, and, and do all these uh, dumb things. I would listen. I would be listening to music that talk about stealing, that talk about killing, that talk about uh, robbing somebody. I would listen to that stuff and then it would change my mood as to me wanting to go do the same thing. So the question do you think it changes your actions and your thought process or does it change the way you react to uh, like your significant significant other? Do, do you think that it changes? I say that it does because I can remember when I was married and I used to listen to music and especially when I was ticked off. Uh, I would listen to stuff that would have me, um, you know, talking to my, uh, my ex-spouse crazy, you know, that would have me sometimes even talking to uh, my children crazy. And I had to stop um, listening to those things. I had to stop listening to that voice that was having, uh, that was steering me to do these things. And that's why, you know, you guys see me when I'm live. I go live with my children. Uh, I go live with people because I want other people to get this. That's why I'm always talking. I'm always ministering to someone because, you know, my life is a ministry. Your life is a ministry. And, you know, it, hey, you never know. We could be right for one another as far as brothers, as far as sisters, or you know what? You may have your spouse on here. You may, it just, you never know who you're going to encounter. You never know what somebody's going through. So, you know, the reason I put these messages out there and I do this, first of all, it's always for God. It ain't never for self-righteous gain. It's always for God. I'm always wanting to spread the gospel, spread the good news and tell somebody, you know, my story and what the enemy has done for me and what he will do for you as well. Um, so yes, uh, to the question, it does change your mood. If you really think about it, the music changes your mood. So I decided to start listening to, you know, gospel music, gospel rap, uh, anything positive that's uh, more encouraging and uplifting because it changed my mood. It changed my mood the other day when I was uh, driving on a truck, <clears throat> when I was uh, rolling and I couldn't find a place where I wanted to go and I was getting frustrated. Uh, Cause I'm looking for this place and I'm like, man, like, what am I going to do? Next thing you know, I'm listening to the gospel music and I'm, I'm praying to God in the truck. And next thing you know, I'm at my appointed destination just by just praying and worshiping God. Now I couldn't be dancing and stuff on the truck, you know, I was bobbing my head or whatever, but you know, I'm singing, you know, I, I'm just doing whatever I can to just stay positive, you know, and I encourage you all to do the same thing. Um, and the last thing I want to say, you know, I don't really want to pick on the music today, but the music today that they putting out there, it's distasteful. It's not good. And our kids are falling into this stuff so heavily, like they just don't even know because we're allowing it. You know, um, the music today is not helping families to, to stay together. I don't hear music that's, that's uh, spreading the message about men and women actually being together and, and, and raising their children up and, and uh, you know, a togetherness and a wholeness. I don't hear stuff like that. I hear a lot of, of separation. I hear a lot of uh, women hurting because the man that did them wrong. And now they feel like they just want to be by themselves and, and don't need no man. And then you got the, the music from the man over here, the great and the woman. And he feel like he can just have as many women as he wants to. And it's just like, when did this stuff stop? When do you put out a different message? Like, why we got to listen to this stuff every single year, every single day? Why does the radio play it so much? Why do they have it all on TV so much? Because it's about mind control. It's a mind control thing. And you have to change what you're listening to. You have to change what you've been hearing. You got to start listening to stuff that's uplifting, stuff that's positive, watching positive things and not watching all these worldly things and following the ways of the world. Because what will happen is you'll find yourself sucked into this vortex or this black hole of nothingness that has no end to it. Or it does have an end, but the end is not what you think that it's going to be. Because now you got folks out here in these songs talking about, uh, I am God, or uh, I can do this, I can do that, I'm, I'm Jesus, and all this other stuff. Like, hey man, miss me with all of that. If you ain't spreading the, uh, the gospel, the good news, if you ain't encouraging a, a man or a woman or children to be doing the right thing and listening to something positive, then you are a part of the problem. 
Your praise and worship is not to our heavenly father. Your praise and worship is to mm -hmm. your earthly father, the one that rules this world, the enemy, the one that's the king of this world. And it ain't right because you are steering people astray. And you know, being on that platform, you are held accountable for those that you lead astray because you're on a platform. And no matter what, you feel like you ain't teaching somebody, you ain't preaching to somebody, but what you're doing, you are teaching and preaching. You're just teaching and preaching negatively. You're not uh, preaching and teaching uh, positively. You're not preaching and teaching the word of God. You're not even living the word of God. So to those that say that they know God, and that you know you want to rock a cross and you want to uh, tattoo your body and put all that stuff all on you and, and make people think that you really about that life. You're not really about that life. You're not because you're still a part of the problem. So let's wake up as people, as God's chosen children, as the ones that originally know how to dance, that originally know how to sing, that it was given to us. So whatever gift that you got, Brothers and sisters, whatever gift that the Lord has blessed, blessed you with, whatever gifts you have, make sure that you always acknowledge our Heavenly Father all the time, every day, all day, not just on Sunday, not just on Wednesday, but every day, all day, all night. When you wake up at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, praise Him, thank Him, because without Him, we are nothing. Without Him, shh. Like uh, Jehoshaphat and them in, in, in Jerusalem and Judah. They wouldn't have been able to uh, get the things that they got. They wouldn't have been able to even survive because of that army that was coming at them. And the army that's coming at us, we wouldn't be able to survive either. Hey, man, that's my message. I love y'all. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge. Shalom, kings and queens, brothers and sisters. Shalom means peace be unto you. Shalom to you all. I love y'all. Blessings to y'all. Knowledge.